Hello, my name is Daniel Gopar, and what I'm about to do is create a little series on how to use Emacs. So basically, this series is not going to be about, you know, the basics, you know, control F, control N, you know, move a character, move a line, move back one line, move forward a word, you know, that type of character, uh, that type of uh, series. What this series is mostly going to be about is basically how to configure Emacs to do uh, what you want. For example, how to install packages, where do you get those packages? Uh, basically stuff like that uh, stuff that I wish people would have showed me when I was learning because when I was learning Emacs I mean I had nobody to teach me I didn't know anybody in real life that actually knew Emacs that could sit down for like five minutes one-on-one -on -one, just talk to me and tell me hey this is how you do this and this is the way you do it and this is how you you know get your configure it configure the packages to do what you want it to do you see, I, I, I didn't know anybody like that. Now, I mean, yeah, there's IRC and stuff like that. But I mean, I mean, they, they can't always be there. I mean, sometimes they don't respond and stuff like that. So just, just you know, I hope that this video becomes a resource to, you know, if it helps one person, then, hey, I help one Emacs user. That's, uh, that's hey, that's a, that, that's a good feeling, I guess. So anyways, the prere prerequisite for this uh, is basically have Emacs installed. So I'm pre I'm guessing you guys already have Emacs installed, and it's pretty easy to do so. And after that, you have to do one final thing before you can start watching the video. Well, I mean, you can start watching the video right now, but I mean, you'll probably have a little bit of difficulty uh, following along. And the reason for that, I say that, is because you need to do the tutorial first. So there, in Emacs, there's a built-in tutorial. So if you press Control H and T, oh yeah. Also, if you guys haven't noticed, um, there's this little thing so you can see what keys I'm pressing. And uh, yeah, so let me just press say resume your last save tutorial. No, all right, all right, guys. So so right now I start. You need to do this, okay? The Emacs tutorial. No matter if you think it's boring, no matter what you think of it, you need to do it. There's no other way around it. I mean, there's videos on YouTube that are tutorials on Emacs but they're basically just this but in a video format so I mean are you guys that lazy I mean come on just read the tutorial man it's not that long just read it and it will really help you out I mean at first I said no way I'm not gonna read that that's boring but then after a while I said oh man there's no other way around it I have to read it so I read it and oh my god it made my life easier I said oh okay this is how you do it and I mean it's beautiful I mean it's nicely made I mean, it's been around for a while, so it's pretty solid. I mean, yeah, you can make it a little bit more interactive and stuff like that, but eh, it, it works. It's good enough. All right, um, and once you do that, then uh, you're ready to follow along. So let me exit the buffer. So just a reminder to exit the buffer. It's Control X, K. And then do I want to kill the buffer? Y yes. Save my position in the tutorial? No. All right, cool. So the, when I started Emacs, it just shows this plain white uh, background. So this is basically when you first install Emacs, when there's no configuration, there's nothing. This is just it. So basically what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to change the theme for the Emacs. So just so you can, uh, so the video looks better because honestly, I don't like uh, white background in video. I think that's disgusting. So I'm just going to do something real quick. Low theme. And then what I'm going to do is manage, manage dark, manage dark, whatever. So there you go. So if you guys want to choose a theme, I just chose this real quick, but let me show you. If you guys want to choose a theme, just go to customize. So I'm sorry, press meta X. So if, for those of you that don't know, those that didn't read the tutorial, meta X is just another uh, word for saying alt. So Alt X together and then press and then type in customize, customize. And if you guys need a little bit of help, just press the tab and it will show up a nice little buffer with uh, available options. So customize themes. There you go. And once you have that, just press enter. And there you go. You, you can move around control N, control P, you know, and then uh, press enter and stuff like that to, to try out the themes, try out the themes that you like. Um, and once you have that, just go to save themes and just put in if you want to save it for just this session or forever. Simple as that. All right, but enough about that. I really like the way it is. So, okay, now you have a theme chosen if you chose one. What next? Well, 
what you need to do next is have uh, is have a dot emacs d directory and what that is is in that directory the dot emacs dot d directory uh, stores all the configurations for your emacs so basically you can also store your dot emacs d in like for example in a github that way you can share it i mean there's people in uh, github that have their whole configuration uh, up there and i mean it's pretty it's i mean some of them are pretty robust some of them are you know a couple liners but hey, it's something so for example let me show you on my system uh the you should create the dot emacs.d in your home directory so if i do so this is my home directory so let me just go cd dot emacs.d so there you go i type it in there you go i'm in it so i press ls and you're gonna see a bunch of other stuff but once you when you first do it if emacs doesn't create it you so you make the directory and what should you what you should do after that is create a file called init.l that file and within that file you're going to store all the configurations that you want emacs to do so for example now that i showed you that file so let me just open that file in emacs so for some reason gnome is glitching on me there you go so I'm going to open a file and the way I open a file is control X control F and now it says find file so I'm going to go to the dot emacs directory dot emacs D bam like that and then I'm going to go to init.l so before I open that file I got to say something I'm using the I did not delete any of my previous configuration so all my config is still there but I'm going to step you guys through it so I'm only going to tell you look at this part ignore everything else okay so I'm gonna go right there and ta da. So at first you're seeing a bunch of stuff. Ignore everything. Just pay attention to these first three lines. So okay. Require package. So what is this? Is? Well, what is this sorcery? All right. So require package just mean I want you to grab this library called package and load it. Now once you load it, we're gonna call this function called initialize that's basically what this is and what we're gonna do in in this package initialize we're gonna add uh, something to uh, this list called package archives and what we're gonna la add is this is this um, archive uh, package manager which is called Melpa now let me let me explain what the, you're seeing so all of this is an elisp emacs lisp so don't worry don't get scared i mean so far it's fairly simple right you load a package you initialize some stuff and you add a element to a list pretty easy right so what exactly is this doing so this is uh, like i said this is a package manager so what it's saying so what it's doing is grabbing the whole repository of melpa and all of its packages and and giving you the ability to browse through those packages that way you have a, a robust set of packages that you can choose from so before before we evaluate any of this before we make it say to take any effect what we're gonna do is just check the the default list of packages that we have available for us so how we do that is press alt x which is meta x so remember people will call it meta x instead of alt x and then what you're going to type in is list dash packages and remember you can use a tab for you to complete so don't forget that and press enter so it's going to do some stuff importing so yeah so look at it. you have all of these available right which is pretty cool so you have all of these oh, uh, ignore the install part those are already what I have but anyways you only have a default amount of set so these are, all, are pretty limited I mean not limited they're all you know good packages and stuff but you don't have that many uh, wide variety so that's what I'm saying there's only the ones that provide from GNU and I mean those are stable and good but I mean you want more stuff right so for now let's kill the buffer control X K enter yeah so let's evaluate this so when we evaluate we're telling emacs to a read this and make it take effect so let's go to require package and press Control x and then Control e and we want to do that at the end of the line that way uh, emacs knows to parse all of that 
So after we do that, let's just go back to the next line for practice. Control X, Control E. So there you go. It evaluated, no errors. And again, let's go to the next line and go all the way to the end. And you can go to the end by Control E, remember? And then once you do that, Control X and Control E again. Bam. So at the bottom, you should see something. So let me grab my mouse. So right here, GNU, you see, so uh, by default, it, are, it was already picking um, GNU packages. But now we added the MELPA packages. So that way you have a more wider variety of packages to choose from. So now if we go to Meta X list packages again, and let's press, so now it's contacting MELPA and all that good stuff. Now there's a lot more packages. For example, let's go just keep on scrolling. So control B to scroll down, so control B. So you see, there's now way more packages. You see, so, and all of these are from Melpa. You see, you'll see some occasionally in GNU, you see like GNU right here. But most of these are from Melpa. So those, that's one way of adding a package manager. There's other ones such as Marmalade and, and stuff like that, but I just choose Melpa because Hey, that's the one that I, I found out first and I just stuck to that one but I mean you can figure out how to add more stuff alright so there you go that's one way alright so so this is already getting pretty uh, 11 minutes so this is one way of adding uh, of being able to see the robust set of packages that Emacs has to offer so in the next video I'll probably show um, how to install packages and how to configure them and stuff like that. Alright, um, that'll be it. Sweet.